Hello, boys and girls. Mrs. Hales here with another art lesson. Lots of baby things are born in spring. Things like baby birds and frogs um, emerge from tadpoles, uh, ducks and chickens. And um, speaking of chickens, I have a really sweet story for you about a duck and a chicken and a goose and a cat called The Perfect Nest. The Perfect Nest by Catherine Friend, illustrated by John Manders. Jack the cat gathered together everything he needed, then built the perfect nest, dry and cozy, just the right size. But the nest was not for Jack. With this perfect nest, he would attract a perfect chicken who would lay a perfect egg, which would make a perfect omelet for a cat like Jack. Soon enough, a chicken came along. Caramba, cried, she cried, a perfect nest. She hopped up and laid a small egg. Then a duck waddled by, sacre bleu, she cried, the perfect nest. The duck pushed the chicken out, hopped up, and laid a medium-sized egg. Then a goose lumbered by. Great balls of fire, she cried. A perfect nest. The goose pushed the duck out, hopped up, and laid a large egg. Jack's mouth began to water. Three eggs would make three omelets. Then the duck leaped onto the goose's back. This is my nest. The chicken flew up on top of the duck. No, this is my nest. The three cackled and quacked and honked, but each refused to leave the perfect nest. They squabbled with each other for days. Each day, Jack tried to get the birds off the eggs. Fire, fire, he cried, but they didn't move. Flood, flood, he cried. They didn't move. Woof, woof, he cried. But the chicken, the duck, and the goose would not move. Finally, Jack stood before them. You birds are so silly. The next farm over has an even better nest, and it's empty. Why doesn't one of you use that nest? An empty nest? cried the chicken, without a goose to sit on my head. Caramba! Socre bleu, cried the duck. I am tired of smelling like the chicken. That nest is mine. Great balls of fire, cried the goose. Out of my way. And they flaw flapped away. Alone at last, Jack returned to the nest and peeked inside and arranged the eggs neatly in a row. Small breakfast, medium lunch, and a large dinner. Jack's stomach rumbled, but then, crack, the small egg broke open and out popped a wet baby chick who looked up at Jack and said, Karumba, hola mama. Crackety snap, the medium-sized egg broke open and out scrambled the wet baby duck who looked up at Jack and said, Sacre bleu, bonjour mama. Crackety, crackety, boom. The largest egg broke open. Out stepped a wet baby goose, who looked up at Jack and said, Great balls of fire! Howdy, ma! Jack stared at the babies. What was he to do? He couldn't make omelets out of them. Dry me, dry me, dry me, cried the soggy baby chick. Feed me, feed me, feed me, cried the hungry baby duck. Play, 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 cried the excited baby goose. Jack hid in the barn. The three babies found him. He hid in the woods. The three babies found him. Jack hid under a tractor. The three babies found him and dragged him back to the nest. Sleep, sleep, sleep. The tired little babies finally whispered, cold, 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 said the shivering babies. Jack scratched his head. Someone had to care for these babies, but there was no one else around. Jack lifted all three babies into the nest. Buenas noches, mama, said the baby chick. 
Bueno, no, no, eh, mamá, said the baby duck. Sweet dreams, ma, said the baby goose. Then Jack climbed into the nest and the babies fell asleep. That's when he realized that this really was the perfect nest. The I hope end. you enjoyed that story. Before we get to work uh, drawing our, our baby chicks, I wanted to show you um, a little bit about baby chickens being born. So here's a little bit more inspiration for you about baby chicks. The baby chicks have already started to crack their shells and poke their way out with their beaks. There's no time to lose, and the pigeon sets off to spread the news to everyone else. It's hard work being born. Just one more push. Eventually, the tiny chick breaks out, head first, damp and spindly, into the world. Oh, where am I? Which way is up? Where's my mum? He's soon followed by his brothers and sisters. Will someone turn me the right way up? Don't look at me, I can't stand up either. The pigeon tells the starling and soon the word spreads all over the garden. One by one the chicks hatch and gradually the animals gather to meet the new arrivals. I'll be along in a minute, just got to finish this lettuce leaf. Hmm. Victor Vowell, are you in that log? Come and see the new chicks. Chicks? Chicks? Who said chicks? But being a cat, Bianca might well harm the baby birds. <laughs> you keep well away. Well away, do you hear? Yes, well away. <laughs> Bianca knows she won't get past the dogs and gives up. Chicks have all hatched now. They're still quite weak, but as they begin to get stronger, they're able to stand up without help. They're also getting hungry. Their feathers are drying out too, and they're starting to get their fluffy yellow color. Apart from one little brown one, who was the first to be born. Quite cute really, aren't they, Trev? You going soft or something? The tadpoles have heard the news too, thanks to a gossipy water beetle. Off for the latest report. Oh, crikey, maybe not. There's a cat up there. One by one, all the animals leave their food and make their way to the yard. The news has spread to the woods, and the deer leaves her snack to have a closer look. The chicks are a few hours old now, and their feathers are completely dry. They look like fluffy bundles. They're getting stronger too, and some of them are trying to flap their wings. Look at me! I can do it! Look at me! All baby things are cute, but they have to be some of the cutest baby things ever. <clears throat> We're gonna draw and color baby chicks inside a nest today. Supplies you're gonna need include a white piece of paper, nine by 12 is fine, it doesn't need to be giant. You need um, a pencil and you need some crayons. And if you want to decorate your nest with some real stuff to give it texture so that it's bumpy and it's lumpy and it's stringy, just like a real bird or chicken would collect things for her nest. Um, you could use some yarn for that. I used um, some real grass from outside and some yarn. And if you have raffia or anything like that around, you could use something like that. So to glue those things down, you would need glue. If you just wanna dry your nest with crayon, you can do that too. Let's get started. 
I drew a C laying on its side, and then inside that, I drew a smaller C. I did this so I would know where to put my squiggly lines for my nest. You don't need to draw the middle of the nest or the back of the nest, because that's where we're gonna put our chicks. So you can just keep making squiggly and straight, pokey, spirally, any kind of squiggly lines or lines that you wanna make to draw your nest is fine. I also picked colors that you that um, you might find in a nest, like lots of browns and yellows and golds and some greens. I'm gonna draw <clears throat> one of my chicks coming out of an egg. So I drew a giant U and then put a zigzag line at the top of that. In top of my, inside my egg, I drew a circle with two eyeballs and a triangle beak and I gave him a little bit of hair at the top. So I drew a U with a zigzag line and then a circle above that. Two eyeballs, a triangle nose, and some pokey hair in the top of his head. Now next to him, I'm gonna put a baby chick that's already come out of his egg. So I'm gonna draw uh, the body of the chick, which is just a round circle, with another round circle on top. All my chicks have two round eyes and a triangle beak between their eyes. I'm gonna give this one some little wings. I want one more chick in here, so I'm gonna put him poking in, <clears throat> trying to look in from behind the chick in the egg. You don't have to see the whole body of that chick. That shows that he's behind the other chick. I'm outlining mine in Sharpie so you can see them. You don't have to do that, or you can outline them with crayon. Um, don't forget to give your chicks two eyes, a triangle beak, and some spiky hair. Um, and then you can put them inside eggs. You could even have an egg that hasn't hatched yet if you wanted to. And you can make your eggs any color that you want. Likewise, you can make your chicks any color that you want. In the story about the chicks being born on the farm, uh, the first chick to, born, to be born was brown, and then all the other chicks were yellow. So push down nice and hard when you use your crayons and try not to leave any white space. If you're making a yellow chicken, you want your chicken to be yellow. You can give them any color beak you want. I have a yellow chick, an orange chick, and a brown chick. Now I'm gonna put some glue down on top of the nest that I colored and then I'm just gonna stick some string and some grass and some cut up tissue paper on top of that. You just have to make sure that wherever you stick stuff, it's on top of a little bit of glue, so the glue will help it stick to the paper. I hope you had fun learning about how baby chicks were born and learning to draw them. I will see you next time, boys and girls.